I rise to support the amendment moved by the member for Kingston. Labor will support this bill, which makes several changes to improve assistance to vulnerable and disadvantaged families. But let's be clear, this legislation is yet another in a long list of told you so moments. It's another example of a government that repeatedly gets it half right and half wrong. And ultimately, it's working people and families who suffer. I'll return to this later. The additional childcare subsidy for child wellbeing, or ACCS, is a vital program which ensures children in extremely vulnerable situations at home are provided with a safe and nurturing learning environment. For many of these children, it can make the difference between staying at home or entering the child protection system. In July 2018, this coalition government introduced a range of requirements resulting in restricted access to an additional childcare subsidy. These changes included reducing the initial approval period from 13 weeks to six, approving eligibility certificates for only 13 week periods, only allowing 28 days of backdating of ACCS payments and refusing applications that aren't approved by Centrelink in 28 days regardless of merit. The government ignored warnings from both Labor and the sector that these changes would have a detrimental impact on vulnerable families. And we were right. In the six months following the July 2018 changes, the number of children receiving the child wellbeing subsidy collapsed by 21 per cent. These numbers returned to pre-July 2018 levels, but only after significant effort and an injection of resources from providers themselves. Shockingly, in Senate estimates, the department said it wasn't concerned about the drop. They also confessed they weren't even tracking if families had dropped out of the system. Despite this disappointing performance, the bill is a step towards reducing the administrative burden on early learning providers and at-risk families. And it provides greater financial security to these families with four key improvements. Firstly, by amending provider eligible enrolment, providers will now be able to enrol children in child protection rather than via a parent or foster carer. For up to 13 weeks, while the parent or foster carer is applying for a CRN and CCS through Centrelink. Secondly, providers may apply to ACCS to be back paid for up to 13 weeks instead of the current 28 days. Thirdly, providers will be able to access ACCS determinations for up to 12 months for children on long-term child protection orders or in foster care rather than the current 13 weeks. And lastly, the calculation of annual income for couples who haven't been a couple for a full year will change to ensure, ensure child care support eligibility more accurately reflects the proportion of time they've been together. This sector worked with the department on this bill and they are supportive of it. So Labor will support these changes because they will fix some of the design flaws in the government system and will help get vulnerable children the support they need. But having said this, the Liberals are just tinkering at the edges of a seriously flawed system and are not invested in supporting service providers, educators, families or even employers by providing a world-class accessible early childhood education system. Early evaluations of the supposedly overhauled package this government introduced in 2018 indicate one in four families is worse off. A full evaluation report is due in 2021, but initial evidence demonstrates that the government has let down this sector and importantly, the families that rely on these services. Many providers say the 2018 package was onerous and placed a heavy burden upon them. Providers expressed concerns about the IT system Issues were also reported about the operation of the additional childcare subsidies, which hopefully today's bill addresses. And to date, while some providers have introduced shorter sessions, the charges for these are often prohibitively high. And notably, only 40% of providers and 41% of families reported to the independent reviewers that the system has resulted in positive change for them. 
What we have seen is an IT system that is sending out blunt letters telling around 91,000 families to date that they owe the government money without any explanation. This is just more evidence the system is too complex and not working for families. In 2018, the government boasted their new system would put downward pressure on fees and that they were driving down the child's cost of childcare. But the reality is CPI figures show childcare costs increased 1.9% in the December quarter of 2019 and had increased by 7.2% in that 12 month period. Disgracefully, fees have risen by 34% in seven years under this Liberal National Government. This is bad enough, particularly punishing women who need to return to work. And now this pandemic is exposing the deep flaws, not only in early childhood education, but also in aged care. And who is suffering? Our youngest, our most vulnerable, and our frontline workers. The Minister for Education last year claimed that Labor plans for taxpayer funding of early education and care were communism. And then COVID-19 hit, and suddenly free childcare sounded like a good idea. Centres would be open, kept open, enrolments would be maintained, and staff would not be worse off. But we know this is not the case. In today's age, we hear from several early years educators that their hours and pay have been significantly reduced or they have been stood down. It does not help that on June 20, the Minister for Education announced JobKeeper was being ripped from the sector. The Prime Minister's rescue package for Victoria's early years sector has also failed to project, protect the jobs of many early years educators. The Prime Minister boasted at the announcement on August 5 that the package would secure childcare spots while ensuring, ensuring no centre closed or no jobs were lost. It would be a triple guarantee with no job losses and no fees for parents. But what we are finding is this triple guarantee is not worth the paper it's written on. These rush measures are complex and confusing, leaving many service providers wondering how the package will ensure their ongoing viability. We know that attendance numbers are significantly reduced. Staff, staff are being sent home. Some of our most underpaid workers are now experiencing financial hardship from significantly reduced hours and no job keeper assistance. And many casual workers from the sector have joined the unemployment queue. Importantly, the transition payment introduced as part of the Victorian package was meant to be a replacement for job keeper and directly protect the wages of early years educators, or so we thought. Nothing in the transition program ensures that any of the money is used by service providers to protect educators' take-home pay. The transition payments included a so-called employment guarantee, stating service providers must maintain existing employment levels and may not terminate an employee other than for misconduct. This guarantee is just not working. One local educator who wanted to remain anonymous because she was afraid of her losing her job said, I would soon, I, would, mm. I was stood down with no pay on Tuesday. I was waiting for government support but received none. It has been an extremely stressful time for myself and my colleagues, some of whom are single mums. We've been caring for the community's precious children while feeling that weight of uncertainty stress and doubt about our own financial future. How are we going to pay the bills? Most of us used annual leave in the first lockdown. I will have to apply for Centrelink to survive. The government has let us down. The government is not protecting workers, services or families with their flawed system and their flawed transition programs for Victorians who are doing it hard during this pandemic. We know that with a stroke of a pen, the Treasurer can extend JobKeeper to all early years educators and give these frontline workers some certainty. We ask the Treasurer to act now because two thirds of the sector have no protection and are not covered by the Prime Minister's so-called guarantee. The part of the sector in Victoria aside, the broader picture is free childcare ended July 12 and JobKeeper assistance for the sector ended July 20. 
despite the fact it was supposed to remain until September. Early years education services providers are receiving only 80% of their usual fee revenue as the system transitions back to the so-called normal system. But our economy isn't anywhere near normal with double digit unemployment and near 20% underemployment. It is scandalous that this government thinks they can snap the early childcare system back to normal when many families cannot afford the gap tree fees and are losing jobs. It means parents rebuilding their small business or women who wanted to return to work will instead have their little ones around their ankles rather than in care. Like Dee Behan, who was quoted on an ABC story on June the 9th. Dee has a six month plan to rebuild her graphic design business. But now a return to the co-payment means withdrawing her son Max from care again. Parents like Dee needed free childcare. The problem was that it excluded many parents returning to work and many providers were left with less revenue than they previously had or shut out of the system altogether. Now, we're returning to the system built for 5% unemployment, not the 12% we're currently experiencing and massive underemployment. The, this bill we are debating is just another example of legislation that only tinkers at the edges. It does little to fix the mess of the government's own making. In this case, the additional childcare subsidy for child wellbeing. Labor supports fixing this mess, but there is so much more to do. I call on the Morrison government to do its job, fix the system because it's not working. Thank you.